Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over if whether or not 16 gigs of memory is enough for software development. So the Changelog is a news and podcast platform that I've been following for quite some time now. And they recently had a show about the M1 Max because I guess they have a maximum of 16 gigs of memory and they wanna you know, have an open question here. Is that good enough for development? And while I don't have an M1 Mac, I do have 16 gigs of memory and I am a software developer. So I decided to reply to them with some real world stats, right? It's like things that I typically run and we'll go over the specs of my machine in a bit here. But you know, I am running Windows 10. Uh, I run a lot of Dockerized web applications. I also typically run at least one or more VMs separate from Docker. Then I do a lot of video recording and editing, specifically at 1080p. I do a lot of coding, specifically web development, mainly with Flask, Rails, a little bit of Phoenix. Most of my applications are also running Webpack, so I have like a Webpack watcher there uh, in all, you know, most of these projects at least. And like most developers, I have a lot of browser tabs open, at least like to me, 15 or 20 is kind of a lot because, you know, that's just the workflow that I'm used to, right? Uh, if I'm working on a feature, I might Google and Stack Overflow a whole bunch of stuff and work on that feature. And when I eventually solve the problem, I close those tabs, right? Uh, I don't like to keep that many tabs open, but that's not really a limitation of you know, because I only have 16 gigs of memory, it's just that's how I happen to work. And then, you know, besides this tweet here, there's other stuff that I typically run, right? Like MP3 players, IRC clients, image editors. There's only so much I can fit in this tweet. And uh, it was kind of funny because someone replied like a minute after and they were just like kind of suspicious. And, uh, you know, it's all in good fun, right? I think they even followed me like shortly after this. And, uh, but challenge accepted. So then I, I thought it would be kind of fun. Like, well, what would happen if I just tried to run all of this in parallel, which is typically not something I would typically do. Like, you know, is my box going to blow up? Is Windows going to crash? Like how, like what's going to happen? And it turns out things are running quite smoothly. Right now I have all of this open in the background and we're going to jump around to my different desktops, uh, virtual desktops, by the way, to see all this stuff. But before that, let me just go into the specs of my machine. So it is a workstation that I bought. Well, I didn't technically buy it. I, I parted it out, right? I bought specific parts here. And actually, if you went to nickgenotakis.com slash uses and in the middle there, like here's a list of all the parts here. But basically it is an i5-4460 quad core running at 3.2 gigahertz. There's 16 gigs of memory, a first generation SSD, and the video card is a GeForce GTX 750. You know, there's other stuff here too that's not important. But like this video card, as far as I know, uh, as far as I remember, at least from the specs, it only has one gig of video memory. So, I mean, this is not a high-end video card at all, yet all of these things, like even with video recording and editing and all the stuff it runs, like it's, it's all good. And you can't see this right now, but you know, I'm recording this video right now with OBS. Like my desktop is running 2560 by 1440. Streaming that out to a file on disk, like an MK4, which is basically, you can just think of that as like an MP4 file. Uh, but yeah, all of this is happening in real time. All of this is happening uh, in the background. Yet, my memory right now is only at 12.5 gigs. And if you've never worked with Windows before, this is a very misleading number because what Windows will do in the background um, is it will very, very happily use way more memory than it's really using because it likes to preload applications that you've run in the past just so that the next time you open them, then they're just going to open up a lot faster. So you can totally just, you know, reboot your box, run nothing at all, but your memory usage might be at like six or seven gigs, even though Windows technically might be only using, I don't know, right? Like I have no idea, maybe like two gigs or something like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if this 12.7 gigs here is actually quite a bit lower than uh, what's reported here. Like if I were running native Linux, then I would imagine it is lower. But in any case, you know, there's still uh, three and a half gigs of room here where Windows will just happily fill that up and use it. And, you know, if it's getting pressured for memory for whatever reason, it will just deallocate those other programs I might have in the background and uh, it's all seamless. So like, what does this feel like? And by the way, uptime too, like the machine's been up for about a week, uh, which is you know, not that much for a Linux web server and also not for Windows, but you know, just letting you know, like I didn't just like fresh reboot, like this is normal developer stuff, right? This this is my day-to-day -day stuff. And uh, you know, if I start jumping around here, I have change log opened a couple times here. You can see though, and it's not important to read the text, but like I'm scrolling around, jumping around, going to the community, like all this stuff just feels really, really fast. Like it's like nothing is running yet everything is running. And uh, you know, if I jump to a different desktop here, uh, this is my typical development workflow. I understand that text is super small. That's not really important for the sake of this video, but I am running Tmux and I am running Vim inside of there with about like 45 plugins. 
And with my 2560 by 1440 desktop, I typically have four code windows open, you know, at roughly 80 characters, like this little vertical line here is the 80 character mark. This all fits very nicely. This happens to be a Dockerized web application that I'm running right now. And, uh, you know, it's a Flask application, so there's a Python web server. There's a Celery background worker, you know, if you're familiar with Rails, that's sort of like Sidekick, give or take, uh, you know, you can think of it like that. It's running a Webpack uh, Watcher server, there's Postgres and Redis, like, you know, five, 6,000 lines of code in the application itself. It's, it's a real app. It's not like some weird, like, hello world example or whatever. So if I go back to here, this is the application running on localhost port 8000, and I'm just jumping around, right? This app feels pretty good, right? It's not slow. Uh, it's not like chugging along, everything is good. If I jump back to the code editor and go to the uh, Vim editor here, you know, I can just start typing in, like, you know, I'm just typing now, it's liquid smooth, right? There's no hitching. Uh, if, you know, I couldn't even tell everything is running right now. Uh, it, it's very smooth. And I also even have like autocomplete for certain things. Like if I just start typing uh, celery there, like it's gonna start like autocompleting based on open buffers. Like, you know, that's all sorts of Vim plugins. Well, I think there was one more line there. Uh, that's all sorts of Vim plugins doing their thing, right? So everything is working uh, really nicely. So going back to the other tab here, you know, yeah, a lot of browser tabs open. Not as many as some developers might have, but enough to where things are working nicely. And if I jump to another virtual desktop here, then uh, you know I have an MP3 player. It's paused right now because I just don't want that to come through in the video. But here I have GIMP running, which is uh, a really nice image editor. And by really nice, I mean like it works, but a lot of people don't like it. I'm pretty indecisive uh, on it. Like I don't run Photoshop mainly because I do want to run native Linux, but like long story short, you know, if I'm making a YouTube thumbnail, uh, apparently I'm not an artist, but you know, Vim or GIMP is running really nicely here, right? There's no delay. I'm just drawing on this thing. It's totally fine. I can add text. I can do whatever I want. There's no delay whatsoever. And DaVinci Resolve here on the left is a real, real, real pig. Like this thing will use every resource it can possibly get its hands on. Uh, it's in fact, my video card is so bad that I cannot even edit videos in this tool very well. Uh, it's not because like it's slow or whatever. It has nothing to do with the 16 gigs of memory. It's just my video card. I get some weird artifacts, like it just doesn't work. But I do edit all of my podcasts in this tool because that is a really good waveform, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to get into that stuff. But notice here, like I'm, and by the way, these wave files are about 750 megs each, and there's two of them, like one for myself, the host, and then one for a guest, like it's uh, editing a podcast. But notice how I'm scanning through, and you can see the timer on the left there. Like there's no hitching, there's no like delay, like everything just works. And, uh, you know, this program is using a lot of resources just on its own. And typically, like, I wouldn't be recording a video with OBS and I wouldn't have like all this stuff open here at the same time. If I'm going to be editing a podcast, chances are like some of that stuff would be shut down. But I don't go out of my way to shut things down. Like, that's the really important thing. Like, I just use the machine and I never have to worry about memory really at all. And if I go to another virtual desktop here and I bring up Hyper-V here, which is uh, Windows's Hype 1 or Type 1 hypervisor. I am running an Ubuntu 2004 virtual machine. I know the font is going to be super small. And over here, uh, that is, I am connected to that virtual machine. So yeah, I mean, right now I only have one VM running. Sometimes I run two, but it's not really important. Even, even if I were to run a second one, it only uses something like 800 megs of RAM. So I have plenty of RAM to work with. Uh, but that is basically the TLDR on like how I operate my machine with 16 gigs of memory. And it's so weird because it's like, there are so many better machines that I could put together right now. Like this is an, you know, an i5-4460 from 2014. It may even have been created in 2013, but I didn't get that specific chip until like a year after or whatever. Like you can get an AMD like 3600X or maybe their 5600X if you can find it, like whatever, you know, a CPU that is so much better. You can get a video card that is ridiculously so much better, yet 16 gigs of memory, still doing fine. Although if I were to update my workstation in the future, which is probably something I might do eventually, right? Uh, I probably would get 32 gigs of memory, but it's not because anything related to development. It's the video editing. I, I really want to have uh, a really, really good video editing and recording experience, possibly even with videos above 1080p in the future, because, you know, I am running this 2560 by 1440 display. You know, I would like to record in that resolution and then just like, you know, uh, be able to crop things out without losing, uh, I guess you can say sharpness of stuff, but I don't want to get on a rant about that or a tangent on that one. But yeah, that's, that's this video here. This is what it's like to develop with 16 gigs of memory. Uh, in my mind, it's completely fine. And that's going to wrap this video up. If you have any questions about my setup, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer every question. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And with that note, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.